Welcome to the Benjamin Zulu Show and today we do things a little bit different but still exciting, informative, educative and encouraging. So we've been seeing your questions, we've not been ignoring you and today we try to answer all of them within the time that we have. <laughs> so if we don't do it today, keep sending them, we'll probably do it in another episode. But today we start the journey on answering your questions, okay? Zulu, are you ready? Very good. Hi. So this one goes, uh, they are mostly in points mm -hmm. describing a 35-year-old man and the woes that this woman has, wondering, um, is it really worth it? So description number one of this 35-year-old man, a man who insists you go cook for him chapati, yet you have known each other for barely two months. A man who asks you to go to his house all the time. When you say no, he doesn't get it. He will ask you again and again. A man who doesn't go to church when you have issues. Apparently, he can't go to church alone. A man who doesn't like discussing issues until things are bad and that's when he will be willing to talk. A man who has unfinished business with the ex, for example, she is still under his medical cover. A man who easily breaks promises. A man without ambitions, he doesn't have a backup plan in case employment doesn't work out or in case he's fired or something happens. So this is a description of a 35-year-old man that a woman has found herself, not really entangled, they've been, it's been about two months of trying to date him so all these issues are within two months and what is she asking what's your take on this should she walk is there hope there for that how old is she again she is um blah, 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 blah. i don't know but about 30 i think we should not be talking about this man <laughs> uh, Michele, sometimes when people describe their question they're actually describing their own symptoms ah <sighs> Okay. The whole write-up is a symptom of our own lack of clarity about what she wants in life. After you've seen all those problems, why are you still presenting the person as a question, as an option? It was enough to see inconsistencies and move on to the next candidate. Okay. But let me tell you why you still keep meeting grown-ups. If it was a 22-year-old, I would have understood. That thinking is a 22-year-old thinking who complain about how people live instead of deciding whether you want them in your life or not. Ah, That's okay. childish naivety of a person dating at the wrong time in life. But I told you another group that will never mature because they quit development. And so they exist that way, blindly stumbling through life and groping in the dark. And I told you of a, a Nikonin, Sima, mm -hmm. self-imposed mental retardation. Yes. That People quit learning and clarifying who they want. Individuation is the first thing you do before seeking romance. To separate mm -hmm. who you are, what you want, the lifestyle you want, who will be in your life, the kind of things you live for, the kind of values that are mandatory, non-negotiables. Okay. This woman does not have non-negotiables. She has never individuated to no minimum, bare minimum. So she's blank. Even seeing all this, mm. somebody whose ex is seen is in Joanna's cover. Somebody who wants to solve issues. One can't go to church if I'm not with him. Why are you writing all of that? She has never individuated. Okay. Remind these kind of people to go back to the drawing board. Learn. Immerse yourself in a few months at least. Even if you can't afford years. Mm. Get self-discovery books. Pay a therapist, pay a life coach. Say, somebody told me I need to know what I want in life. Yes. How did the conversation come up? This was the question I asked. Yeah. The fact that these ones can't make you make up your mind. Yes. Show that you don't have measuring standard for mm. what you want in life. Okay. Your measuring standard is your individuation, what you want in life. I will never describe that man because for the same reason I've always said, I don't like gossip. Yes. <laughs> this guy has chosen his life. Yes. Choose yours. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's the life he's living. That's true. Nobody has to get involved with him. Mm -hmm. So, whenever you see people, imagine this guy has five baby mamas. Why are you describing him here? Is this your son? No. Thank you. <laughs> That's the life he has chosen. Don't bad mouth people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Choose different. Simply have nothing to do with him. Is that rocket science? Kusha. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So the other one says, um, 
uh, how to break ties with manipulative parents and family. So the family is highly dependent on me financially. I'm constantly servicing loans for them, I'm getting into debts for them. I'm overwhelmed and I really can't take it anymore. And I don't know how to let them know that I can't keep doing this. I haven't been able to grow myself at all. Plus I fear curses if I, if I abandon them. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that question is also coming from naivety. Okay. The problem is not the family. Their lifestyle is not admirable. Mm -hmm. The economic mindset and how they operate the world is dangerous for survival. But she, this person has simply not individuated. No. We've done a show how we said how your own family can keep you in perpetual cycle of poverty. Yes. If you follow their philosophy, if you do what they want, you'll end up like they are. Always remember that. Respect your parents, remember that. Acknowledge the fact they brought you to the world but also acknowledge their own limitations. What they have not done right and what you must correct during your tenure. Yeah. Again, it's not okay for children to be feeding the parents. That's reverse order. It's parents to feed children. It's parents to organize their finances to bequeath, to give wealth forward. Yeah. To pass wealth backwards, it's reverse. Mm. One reason we are behind it because we have normalized pathology as yes, Africa. Yes. Poverty makes it look like it's my duty to take care of my parents. My parents should take care of me. I should take care of my children, not let them take care of me. Yeah. And I told you we must be the ones to flip the script. Yes. Let's be the last group to demand our children to carry us financially, to place demands for pocket money and sustenance. Plan your life, get the kind of kids you can take care of without burdening them. Yeah. If they give you gifts, you'll be happy. But yes. you're not depending on them. This person must put boundaries. Let me tell you the problem with having to uh, disengage from poor people. They're very needy and clingy and manipulative. Okay. Because of the badness of their situation, how tough it is, mm -hmm. they cling to anyone who has any resource. And they threaten you with, with the curses. We've had the person many yes. curses. Yes. They've been made to think, obey your parents, children obey your parents, da, 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 da. you need their blessings, you yeah. know, those kind of things. When you're a child, you obey. When you're an adult, you honor. So it says everybody honored. Honor means to acknowledge. You're supposed to acknowledge your parents, but not to come to their under their control. Control your life now. You're even answerable to God directly. You don't tell God you behave this way because your parents said. No. Once you become a grown up, this is your life. Yes. <laughs> so yes. you need to draw boundaries and only give what is healthy to give without being exhausted. Yeah. Assign them what you can afford per month mm -hmm. and stop at that. And what you can afford is not 90% of your salary. No. It's 20 or 10%. Not debts even. Thank you. No, yeah. don't pay debts for anyone. Mm. Don't take loans. Yeah. Give what you can to continue developing on your own. Yeah. If they threaten you with the curses, remember Proverbs 26 too, that undeserved curses will not settle. This kind of people need a lot of therapy to individuate. Now, again, remind new workers that your first money is supposed to go to towards yourself. Yeah. If possible, invest the first 50% of your salary for a whole year in self-development. Yeah. If possible. <laughs> Live on 50%. The other 50, even if the whole salary is 20, it's 20 that fat $100 remaining. Yeah. Buy books. <laughs> Get live coaching at 10 conferences. Buy it clothes. Buy. Mm. Build. You are, the, you are the cash cow. If it is weak, it will never produce. That's true. Before we went to farm, our dad would always make sure we feed the oxen. You must. So they can pull better. Feed the oxen. So that they can pull better. Absolutely. Start with yourself. And if you're not purchasing materials, hey, we can it's very amazing that we have graduates who never read another book since from the time they graduate. <laughs> you meet them around here, it's fourth, fifth year, and they, they they can't tell you what they're reading. Because they're not. They live on garbage. <laughs> <laughs> they live on rumors, hearsay, sensual content, not, and they are empty. Yeah. Listen, if you are literate, read. If you are capable of reading, read. The other day I ran late when I grabbed accidentally my wife's book that was lying there and I was glued on one of the pages <laughs> and another one. You know, we had been as supermarket some time when we are paying at the counter, I realized she has held back one book to pay herself. Oh, because she said, when I pay myself, I feel a certain kind of ownership and pleasure. You know? Yes. She'd exhausted one of our readers, a person, others, that yes. she'd been reading everything about. 
Uh -huh. Now she had bought a book by another I know. The other others, I did not know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this one I knew, but I had not read him. Robin Sharma. They yes. had no title. Uh -huh. So I found the book there. And it was so captivating. Quoting mighty names like G.K. Chesterton. People have met out here. Yeah. I'm putting them in context and until I forgot and I was walking out. Yeah. It taught me the power of physical books. Because me, I usually subscribe online. Ah. We had been taught that you must, your monthly budget must include reading learning. If you're not doing that, my friend, you're lagging behind. Yeah. You're falling behind. He told her, even small money like $10, anything, online apps are cheap because they can afford you the material with less cost on, their hands, mm. on themselves. Mm. So they told us the same book, you'd have paid $20 there. Yeah? You get online for $8, soft yeah. copy, yes. audio, something. So I consume that a lot in my vehicle, in my world. But my girl is to physical books. So I learned an advantage of physical books. You see it there, it imposes the presence, you peruse. Yes. There I made a decision. Every book I've read, I'll buy physical. Yeah. Now even if I'm consuming <laughs> so that and she was telling me, you see, so children need to see it. Yes. Those books when it is phys yeah, physical presence has yes. a power of its own. And they smell really good. This uh, I, I smell of books, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know? Yes. And, and, and and imagine mm. by just listening to what G.K. Chesterton and Robin Sharma were, yeah. were reasoning about and saying you first lead yourself, take initiative on your life, manage. Leadership is not for corporate. It's not even for the head of the family. Your personal space requires management. Yes. Requires organization. Yes. Requires thinking. Mm -hmm. Requires progress. Mm -hmm. Decisions. He said, stop thinking leadership is top of their politics. He said, you don't need titles. Just organize your room. You realize you've managed that far. Yes. Clean your clothes. Manage your, your hundred shillings. Mm. Plan your money. Mm. Take initiative to plan what I might do next. Yeah. He said, most people you have liked because they had leadership and they did not have titles. Only you do not know that that word is the thing. The quality you admired, you know the people you liked. How clean they were. Yeah. How honest they were. How reliable, timekeeping, work ethics, self money. What is that? First leadership, my friend. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it, it's because we had lived, uh, left leadership to titles and positions. Yeah. <laughs> you ignored it. And Maxwell has done leadership. Max, John C. Maxwell yeah. has taught leaders 21, 21 laws of leadership and 21 qualities of a leader. Mm -hmm. I, led those, I read those. They were so deep. The law of the lead. It's time I was telling you off air that your career will stop where your imagination stops. Yes. Even if you are given better ideas and you can't conceive them, you would apply them. That's true. So your career will stop there. So the first law is always the law of the lead. You are the limitation of how you can go in life. Yeah. And one of this person and all the others stop sending all the money home, assign what you can send them, and at least forty percent send it because first salary is never a lot. Eh? Yeah. I'm using big percentages yeah. because the, the whole forty percent <laughs> might be two books. <laughs> Goodness. Go to a therapist and say, I don't have anything wrong. I just want to check up. Mm. <laughs> Let mm. me process my story. Tell me what you hear. Yeah. And you pick issues. For me, when I was doing masters, it was mandatory to do 25 hours of therapy. Yeah. Although we are not feeling sick. And yet I ended up processing so many issues that they had not yet become a crisis. And yeah. the therapist said, this is a problem with life. The things that are obstacles on your road will, not, will never hit you until you come to them. Yes. So some of these things are lying there. Yes. <laughs> Until you wait, you mm. come to them, mm. <laughs> you know, and yeah. then we went to PhD, we went to do 50 hours. So I've been to 75 hours of therapy wow. when I was not in a crisis. And yes. they grew me so much. Stop associating growth and therapy with the crisis. Eh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. The last example about what you need to learn. Mm -hmm. I, I realized that a car I was driving some time back mm -hmm. was faster than the recorded speed of the new version of that car. Okay. The pickup speed for the new car was, of that uh, that car was about, is it 11 seconds? Or zero to 100. There's a way we people measure pickup speed. So it's really zero to 100. Just going to float with this one. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so zero to 100 pickup, okay. it's, it's for men and speed money at anyway, <laughs> was 11 seconds. Uh -huh. That's very fast for, it's a speed in car really. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot. But mine was picking easily at nine, easily at ten. Uh -huh. So I was asked my if this car is over ten years old from yes. manufacture. Yes. Why is it faster? Have they tampered with the engine? Maybe to produce more power while tampering with the lights? But what? What? But I had not interviewed the guy. Anything he told me. Let me tell you some, something called mechanical fitness and car health. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying there's a way by by your manner of drive, the engine forms grooves and smoothness that goes with the style of use. Ah. Okay. Okay. Although the new car is brand new, just arrived, yes. it's just like a new shoe. 
Yes. When athletes go to determinant races or they're playing the football game that is determined, they usually don't use new shoes. Mm -mm. They use the shoes they have used slightly until it has flipped the leg. Okay. <laughs> so they say your car is picking that quickly because you and it know each other. Kabisa. <laughs> you know so the peak. Yes. You've used until. So it told me you can give it another driver and you won't attend that. That's true. <laughs> that is true. So. Do you know there's some things about you that are so new until you have used yourself, quote unquote, mm. until you know the pickup, the wear. Some of those things you can't know them when you're living inside your groove. You need another person, assessment, mirror to know your optimal speed, and you might outperform people you share abilities yes. just because you are more aware of where your pickup speed, where's where's yes. the train. And then he was telling me about mecha that's mechanical fitness. Okay. So he was, he was telling me about car health. He told me, you see, did you put better tires? Yes. So those tires have better grip. Mm. He told me, so it made me relate quickly. You learn to manage your family and your people when you've known what gives you grip, advantage, where to position what, without even increasing your engine power or consumption or cost or anything of your life or salary, anything. Yeah. But just knowing where is your optimal hair. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, and you gave the last example, say, if you buy a new radio, and me, I bought the same radio, and mm -hmm. I've been used it for a year, I'll mm -hmm. produce better sound than you, my friend. Oh. Having studied this radio, I know which one balances where. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> 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 yes. So, it told me, don't always think time where, think how well it has fit my hand. Yeah. How m so that's how your personality is. Mm. You need an operational manual for your personality to know where to arrange this and this to produce a surround sound with the same equipment. Yes, that's what you should be doing when you start working. Okay, get operational manual for your personality, get operational manual for your particular path. Know what you're good at, what you are your risk, what are the obstacles on the road. Although I've not yet knocked the leg, yeah, it's too late to arrive there. <laughs> when I'm supposed to be making moves and there's a pit, a pothole here, yeah, I've never seen. I had a lot of yeah. potholes myself, gaps. Yeah. And I told you, it's better to have a, a red flag because it's a flag, it's flapping, it's mm, visible, mm. than a red gap. A missing ability, some area of unknowing that is so dangerous. Doesn't scream, but it's a pothole. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> be careful. You can sit here, but when it comes to romance, you're very suspicious. But at work, you're very work. <laughs> <laughs> you can be all wonderful and performing well. And yeah. Until the space of trusting a person with your heart mm. arrives. You become so suspicious, paranoid. You text them 20 texts until you see, is this a... No. You said... So the Zulu in the working space is very confident. Yes. The Zulu in romance has never dealt with betrayals. No. Has never overcome oh, traumas. No. Yes. <laughs> it's unable to rest and trust. Mm. That's a red gap. Okay. okay. Usually it won't disturb you until you come there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Hi. So. Um, hi Zulu, I feel there's a bias in how men and women deal with matters and fidelity in a relationship. Last year, my boyfriend cheated with a random woman at a party, didn't come home, and somehow I found out. Last week, he found flirty messages on my phone from a guy I used to work with. Now, it's become so difficult convincing him that I didn't actually sleep with him. He's, he's moved out, and I feel like I've been treated unfairly considering he did worse. Is it? Is it? Is it possible to come back from this? Okay, number one, you are dating the wrong way. Okay. Cohabiting is not dating. Okay. It sells you chi. Mm -hmm. He moved out and he should never come. He should never have come in. <laughs> <laughs> Another problem is it insinuates this is her house. He had just come in. Mm. Most likely she was dating somebody below her. Ah. A man who is worth his name will never move into a woman's house. Yes. A man whose masculinity is healthy, who has still a, a healthy ego, mm. pride as a man, wants to accommodate the woman, not to be accommodated. Yeah. Please marry men, eh? date men. Stop dating these cockroaches who are looking for somebody to accommodate them. Then you start complaining when they demonstrate their cockroach behaviors. <laughs> Why are you shaming the male club? That's not a man. That's not our member. Mm -mm. Please. No, 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 no. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have minimum standards. You don't move into women's houses. Uh -huh. No. If we fall out, 
you are the one I'll kick out. I will not have to move out. He moved out because this is her house. Yeah. Another possible problem is when you date people who are below you, they will still misbehave with people who are really on their level. Ah, okay. <laughs> they stay with you for the perks. Yes. This house, probably there's food, probably you're paid bills, mm. probably you are doing many things that mm. make their life easier. Mm -hmm. and, and then, in terms of the real connection for romance, they will end up connecting people on the level. Some people cheat in the house helps because him and house help are more on a closer level than you. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. Yes. <laughs> He did not cheat, was really being himself. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> You're the one who has forgotten who you are. Okay. Another, another problem is this question of people now being more strict because they're just men. Mm. There's an injustice that has been visited upon women because of their social position, that they're supposed to be the home builder. Polygamy has been allowed over years. Yeah. Bigamy has not been allowed. No. Women don't marry multiple men. Yeah. A woman can marry m multiple women. Is a societal, cultural thing that because anyway, a man could have married several women. Anyway, just chose you alone. If he just did that with a woman, and but he still comes home to you, uh, I'm not saying you should tolerate it, yes. but it's a general perception in society. Yes. So men grow with that, and many religions still allow men to have multiple women. African, whatever, understand that perception. Even even those who don't subscribe to those religions have those notions. Yeah. That a woman should be strictly one man. But a man can serve a woman. Don't have to tolerate it. Yeah. But understand many of them, the reason they, they, they are too strict on you is because of that. The other okay. thing is the biological, territorial nature of the male species. Mm. Mm. If a woman sleeps with another man, or if a man sleeps with another woman, mm -hmm. you feel like he took your special things away, out of the family. Mm -hmm. Your special intimacy, he took it to outsiders. Yes. But if a woman sleeps with another man, mm -hmm. most likely he came to my home, to my woman. It feels like a personal affront, a violation of my territorial integrity. He came to challenge me in my own house. He entered my home. Okay. The interpretation of cheating for men is very different. It's power, it's territorial, it's an affront. To my masculinity, mm. my, my my a small king, another person has come to interfere with my time. It's not sex now. No, it's more. You get it? Yeah. Because when I marry you, I brought you to my home. If yes. a man sleeps with you, he has come into my bedroom. Another man has come into my bedroom. They usually killed, by the way. Yeah. The most confrontation of cheating between men and men is killing. One man was killed and drawn to the road. No case was followed up, nobody, no, and he, they knew he used to cheat with a certain man's wife and he got wind and came and ambushed. And nothing has ever been done, it's like, like an animal. The Bible said if you sleep with another man's wife, it's like taking bread, coal, fire into your laps and expect not to be burned. Mm. And no amount of soothing will silence his jealousy. It yeah. says there that life is, love is as strong as death. So the jealousy of men has the fierceness of territorial infringement. You're entering my home, my bedroom. Yeah. Any man who has sound thinking will not bother a woman who has a man. Normally. These ones are usually fools and psychopaths. <laughs> Please uh, uh, remember to respect our gentleman's <laughs> and not so, to keep those elements on us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so with this one, the way he's moved out, he just stays out there. I yes. think that's what we're going with. Yes. Ah, yeah. The other question is, um, divorce and breakup can be a difficult and painful experience. Yes. It can affect you financially, socially, emotionally, and psychologically. So it's been three years since my divorce and I'm still experiencing feelings of depression and anxiety. I haven't been able to move on from this place. And my wife, uh, my ex-wife has since moved on and remarried. So this gentleman is struggling with what happens to him after divorce. Yeah, sometimes divorce is like emotional amputation. Something about you has been cut away, especially yeah. if you are honestly in it. Yeah. People don't experience divorce the same. No, Some people don't. had already disconnected. Yeah. Others never really meant to be sincere. It's 
too much work to be honest and self-controlled, not to sleep around. What are you saying? It's my freedom. But this guy was genuinely in the marriage. Yeah. He lost something. He did. Even if he's on or failed. You can initiate, but it still hurts you so badly. Even if you initiate it. So, what happens here is, this man should have sought treatment immediately. Even if divorce was amicable, check out with therapy just to be sure. Yeah. Even if it's just one session, go and be sure. Whether you're balanced. So this man is stuck there because of bleeding. What is amputation? Amputation, you said, uh, losing something that you treasure, like marriage, like amputation. Yeah. You will heal, but you'll never be the same. Something that used to be a part of you is no longer part of you. Yes. And if there were children, if there's a more disorganization that is children-wise, family-wise, finance, it's wider now. Mm. You need more wisdom in healing. So he should, he should stop sitting there and seek treatment. Okay. People expect physical amputations to be followed by follow-up and treatment. Mm. Psychological, emotional amputations should do the same. Don't wait until you're crashing. Don't wait until things are not working anymore to take a step. Let him rise up and seek treatment. He can manage. Yes. And our final question. Uh, hello, Zulu. I have a difficult time balancing my expectations and the expectations of a relationship. I find myself mostly ignoring my need to take care of my partner's needs. But I'm slowly starting to feel neglected. Why can't they see what I do for them so they do the same for me? I'm feeling stuck. Kindly help. Ask them that. Oh. <laughs> Why can't they see and do... Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're just forwarding the question to the wrong person. Okay. This is just fear of if I ask for my needs to be met, I'll be rejected. I'll sound like I'm too demanding. It's like I don't have a right to ask. Yeah. Relationships don't work because the love was sincere. They work because you gained experience in expressing yourself. Okay. Communication is not inborn or automatic. You, you learn it by courage, risk-taking, and a trying. Yeah. It seems like talking is easy. Somebody said words are free, but how mm -hmm. you use them can cost you. Yes. Speaking may be easy, but what you say can save you or lose you or make you lose. Let her now learn how to exercise. It takes a lot of energy to say mm. something like that. It takes a lot of calculation, typing, deleting, typing <laughs> again, saving somewhere. <laughs> so this is, these are perfect place to learn how to have uncomfortable conversations with their yeah. partner. Yeah. Not to say I have been feeling like uh, you're not really coming through for me. Mm -hmm. And see whether he is willing to amend. Yeah. To do correct things. If he's unwilling, you will not have gone anywhere in this list anyway. If he's willing, both of you have learned a major milestone mm -hmm. in meeting each other's needs. In either case, practice this, use this as the chance yeah. to learn how to bring up conversations that count. How to deal with your fear of rejection? Never get into a relationship that you can't imagine it breaking apart. Yeah. When you get into a relationship, your first need is not to make sure we marry by your way. <laughs> your first need is to make sure you're happy, both of you. You're satisfied. You're blossoming. You are, both of you are flourishing in it. You're meeting each other's needs. Your first need in relationship is for it to be healthy and happy. And to say if it is not healthy and happy, there is no point. There is no point. Yes. And those are the questions that we were able to handle during this session. Thank you for sending them in. Continue sending them and we'll try and find more time just to take care of your questions. Thank you so much for tuning in. Adios.